Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. Make sure you hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss out on this kind of garbage in future. If this is not your first time on the channel, you may want to seek some professional help. In either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate you being here and watching this content that I produce for you. For today's deck profile, we're looking at Lunalite OTK. Long gone are those spammy days of just being able to churn out rank fours that I fucking loved, by the way. They really need to bring back Tiger. Instead, we're moving on to the option of to just try and flatline our opponent as quickly as possible. The deck has had a bit of a fall from grace in terms of its ability to play. There are some other builds out there that are certainly going to be more competitive than this particular one, but for the most part, it's a rogue pick at best. But just because it's rogue doesn't mean we can't have a fuck ton of fun. If you're watching this video and you're inspired to go out and pick up some of the cards from this video, or any others for that matter, you should check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There is a link in the description to their eBay store, and courtesy of yours truly, you'll get yourself a nice discount if you use it. To boot, they don't just do Yu-Gi-Oh singles, they do Pokemon ones as well. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me, let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So before we get started, let me first apologise if there are any crazy noises in the background. It has been blowing a gale outside, and on top of that, it's been snowing, which has sent the horses next door absolutely fucking crazy. On top of that, I apparently have the world's loudest fan, which decides to get picked up in the background sometimes. I'll do my best to edit that out during the video. So we start off today's deck profile with a couple of Kaijus here. We've gone for Dark because we can allure these off. Uh, just that's the main bit of synergy there. You could opt to swap these out for other ones, but honestly, I think it's a really good choice to make. It's a really good way of dealing with sticky, problematic monsters that can stop you going in for your OTK. Just two copies of these, though. I really didn't want to have any more than this because you really don't want to clog on them. We've got triple copies of Lunar Light Wolf here. The ability to be able to inflict pierce on your opponent is really, really nice. But also the fact that its scale effect is really quite relevant in this particular build. Being able to do those fusion summons is a nice little touch. Kaleido Chick here, being able to send as cost is absolutely fucking bonkers. Again, triple copies of this, you absolutely need to play it at three. Just the two copies of Yellow Martin is perfectly sufficient for this build. Again, you can up it to three if you want, but honestly, I think two is more than enough. Purple Butterfly helps you unclog your hands a little bit, as well as being able to boost attacks, which is kind of nice as well. Can help go into those OTKs, but again, it's a card that you can choose to omit if you want to use something else. Just a single copy of Emerald Bird here. I'd be very, very tempted to up this to two, but one has been absolutely fine in testing so far. Being able to pitch cards from the hand to draw cards is really, really nice, especially if you've got Perfume or Serenade Dance kicking about there. Just a single copy of Black Sheep here to help generate that resources, keep polymerization going round in circles. Also the fact that it can help regenerate your other resources as well. I think just the one copy in here works perfectly fine. Some people I've seen playing more than the one copy. I really don't think that's necessary. We then move on, we've got triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. I think the most generic hand trap, you have to run it at three as much as you possibly can. If you don't want to run hand traps at all, you can certainly omit this in favour of other cards. But honestly, I think Ash hits every deck, even if it's just in a small amount, but against other rogue decks, which is where you're going to get most of your wins, this is going to blow out certain decks. Running double copies of Allura Darkness in here, you could up this to three, but really you don't want to banish too many of your cards. I think if you're running a bigger monster pack, you could definitely run more of these if you really wanted to. But also the fact that I wanted to keep the cards at 40, the deck can be a little bit bricky. So building up as much consistency as possible is absolutely necessary. You want to really go in for that OTK as quickly as you can. Running the two copies of these is going to help you get there. Running a single copy of Harpies, Feather Dust, I really didn't want to include any other main deck back row removal. I think the one is absolutely fine. You could run other cards like Twin Twisters if you wanted to, but honestly, I don't think it's necessary. We've got the TCG exclusive, great to polymerization. We've got two copies of this in here. Honestly, I think two is all you need. You could run three again if you wanted to, but I think three is just too much. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself clogging too much on your fusion cards. But this is a really, really good addition to the deck and definitely one that you'll want to look at playing in your builds. Just a single copy of Polymerization here. Again, some people prefer to play more. I think the one is more than enough. We've got so many other fusion options in here. And honestly, I think this is the weakest, apart from the fact that it's the most searchable. Triple copies of Lunar Light Fusion. Again, you need to see these fusion cards as quickly as you can so that you can obliterate your opponent. Triple copies of Lunar Light Perfume. Unfortunately, not searchable because it's Lunar Light, not Lunar Light. A uh, bit of an unfortunate thing, but it is an incredibly strong card and one that you need to max out on in this deck. 
Just two copies of Foolish Burial Goods. I'd like to play three, but again, space is tight in here. You're going to use this to send your Serenade Dance or your Perfume to the grave and benefit from that. Triple copies of Tenki because searching things for free is great. Also, the fact that it does give you a small attack boost, not that that really matters all that much. We've got triple copies of Forbidden Droplet. If you don't have access to this and you want to go for something a bit more budget friendly, you could play other hand traps. You can max out on some of these other cards that we're playing less copies of and go for a little bit more consistency if you so wish. Triple copies of Potter Desires because really you don't aim to make it out of turn one anyway as much as possible. You want to just kill your opponent and drawing two additional cards will certainly help you do that. The deck does thin itself relatively nicely so you can search key components and then activate this at the end and go off from there. Also if you think your opponent's got an Ash this is a really good way to bait them out. And a single copy of Serenade Dance. The main effects don't come up all that much, although they're a little bit more relevant in this particular build. The main thing for this is being able to banish it and use that effect from there. And then onto our extra deck, I think that most of this is pretty self-explanatory. The fusion ratios are about right if you ask me. A single copy of Cat Dancer, two copies of Panther, a single copy of Saber, and two copies of Leo Dancer. If you want to look at combination videos and stuff out there, certainly there are plenty out there. I'm not going to include them in this particular video. There are plenty out there though that could definitely help you out if you need it. And the XC's options are definitely not dead. We can go into Abyss Dweller, Degares being able to dig deeper, dump cards into the grave. What's not to like about that? Also, the fact that you can double the attack of one of your monsters is absolutely insane in this deck. From there, we move on to Tiger King. Spot the error that I made in the video. I'll love you if you do. I'm sure you will, you Yu-Gi-Oh players. You don't read cards, but you do notice when people make fucking mistakes. Anyway, a single copy of Tiger King in here. It does what it does. It's all pretty self-explanatory. A single copy of Baguska. When you open bad, you can make one rank four. This can help buy you time. And of course, if you're forced to go first for any reason, maybe your opponent sussed out that your plan here is just to obliterate them as quickly as possible. This can help buy you the time that you need. And then onto our link options. Again, most of these I think are fairly self-explanatory. Access Code Talker is just a big OTK machine. You can swap this for Borrow Sword if you prefer, but Access Code Talker is on the whole a lot better. We've got some utility cards in Nightmare Unicorn and Nightmare Phoenix. These are just as good as they are. You can also run something like Cross Sheet, which we've not included in this particular build, but something definitely to consider. We've got a single copy of Daruma Doll for being able to destroy Backrow. What's not to like about that? And then finally, Predator Plant, Vert, Anaconda. This is going to help you see those fusion spells as and when you need to see them quite quickly and go in for the kill as quickly as possible. And that is all for today's deck profile. Hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe and the notification bell, or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far though, I hope that it's the former rather than the latter. In either case, though, I do appreciate you making it this far into the video. As a quick note before we round off, though, it isn't just deck profiles that we do on here, although there are a slew of those at the moment because the well is running a little bit dry. Content is very difficult to make at the moment, and if you do enjoy your content creators, you should definitely find every way to support them that you possibly can. This little thing that's going on in the world at the moment is absolutely killing our ability to make the content that we love. And I'm sure we all know what I'm talking about. I just can't say its name because I don't want to get fucking demonetized. If there is something you'd like to see on the channel that you haven't seen already, definitely let me know down in the comments. And if you did enjoy the video, definitely let me know too. I take as much time as I possibly can to read as many of them as I possibly can. Again, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. And I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.